Tapestry. Picard is dead. <laughs> Picard and a few other crew members were hurt in an away mission and are beamed into sickbay. Worf carries a wounded Picard to the operating table, and Beverly says his robot heart has been damaged and puts those cortical stimulators on him. And I hope him jumping three feet into the air every time they deliver a shock doesn't mess with any internal damage. And I just kept thinking how hard it must have been to shoot that scene without laughing. Picard suddenly finds himself in a glowing white environment where Q shows up to tell him that he is God and Picard is in the afterlife. He tells him he died under Beverly's hand, which is not really a surprise. <laughs> but for some reason, Picard refuses to believe that. <laughs> he also finds it hard to believe that Q is in charge of the afterlife. Q brings up Picard's father to convince him, and he chastises Picard for joining Starfleet against his wishes and dying ahead of his time. Q also brings in the voices of other crew members who have died under Picard's command. I'm surprised there weren't more. <laughs> he asks if Picard has any regrets, and Picard says, And my only regret is dying and finding you here. Q says the reason Picard died was his robot heart, and when he asks what happened to his real one, Picard says he made a mistake. Q recreates the incident where Picard was stabbed through the back by a predator-looking alien. Picard says he wishes he had been more responsible back then and avoided the incident in the first place. Q asks if things would be different if he had a chance to do things over. And when Picard says yes, he's suddenly back in time, being slapped. The woman walks away, and Picard talks to the other two people in the room, Marta and Ron Howard, and they joke about how Picard was cheating on the woman. Indicating that it's par for the course, before the leaving. Q shows up and tells Picard that he is 21 again and a new graduate. He says he's given him a chance to alter his past and any regrets. Unfortunately, Picard doesn't say he regrets how stupid those chess pieces were and how difficult it would be to play a game where all the pieces looked practically identical. Man, I had a comment about how cool the chessboard was. <laughs> <laughs> Picard talks about Q potentially changing the timeline by sending him back, but Q says Picard isn't so important that he would cause any dramatic changes. And he promises nothing he does will mess anything up. Which sounded totally made up. I don't know why Picard would trust Q about anything. Q says if Picard can avoid getting stabbed through the heart this time around, he'll take him back to the present, still alive. And with a real heart this time. He asks Picard what the whole slapping thing was about, and Picard explains that it was just something he was into back then. <laughs> Actually, he explains that he had a date with the woman, who found out that he also had a date with another woman. He asks the computer what time it is, and it turns out he's running late for his second planned date. And I thought it was weird that he asks the computer. I thought it was going to turn out that he was actually on the Enterprise in the holodeck or something, and this was all going to be some kind of big ruse. I thought it was very impressive that he remembered what time his date was supposed to be decades ago. <laughs> That's a good point. He goes to meet his second date in the casino. Now that Picard has a more mature perspective on things, he hesitates to go forward with the date, and she ends up getting offended and throwing her drink in his face. He then makes his way over to the space pool pinball table to watch Ron Howard win a game. Against a gill-faced Twi'lek. And then a Nausicaan comes over to challenge him. Picard tries to talk Ron Howard down, who laughs him off. Because growing up as a child star has given him a great deal of confidence. And the design of the Nausicaan reminded me of the guy from Allegiance, which is not a good thing. He reminded me of a predator. Like an asylum version of a predator. Predator NATO. Oh, Predator NATO. I was thinking NATO like N-A-T-O. <laughs> like what? <laughs> well, they haven't joined yet. Off to the side, Picard tells Q that the Nauskin is cheating, and Ron Howard will want revenge later. So Picard will rig the table so Ron Howard wins in a rematch, and the Nauskins will be outraged at losing, and that's where Picard will get impaled. And I like that Nauskin laugh ripped straight out of Predator. <laughs> And the whole time that Picard talks about how stupid he was back then, it feels like he's humble bragging. I got stabbed because I was so badass. And I got slapped because I was pulling so many girls at the same time. Ron Howard says he thinks the Nauskin was cheating, and they should cheat back. Picard says it won't solve anything, and they should just leave it. Which causes Ron Howard to walk out, disgusted. 
and Marta tells Picard that he would usually be the one to plot revenge, and says he must be becoming more responsible since graduating. Q interrupts as a delivery boy. He was stupid. <laughs> and when Marta leaves, he suggests Picard might regret not getting into a relationship with her. Q also tells him that Ron Howard chose not to take his advice and is rigging the space pool pinball table. Picard goes to the casino, where he tries to dissuade Ron Howard, but he still won't listen. And he finally threatens to tell the gambling foreman what he did. Which causes Ron Howard to get mad and leave. Later, Picard is telling Marta what happened, and she expresses her continued amusement at seeing him so serious and responsible, and says she finds it very attractive. She asks if he ever thought about them getting together, and he says yes, and decides to go for it. Picard wakes up, but he is next to Q. Q asks Picard if he feels guilty for what he did, but he says no, and things will be different now. He goes back to the casino and tells Marta he has no regrets, but she says she's afraid they ruined their friendship. She leaves, and Q makes fun of how poorly things have gone for Picard so far. Later, the three friends are at their last planned gathering before shipping out, and it is very awkward. And the Nausicans interrupt to challenge them to another game. Picard tries to say no, but Ron Howard gets pissed when the Nausicans accuse them of being cowards. And he steps up to fight, but Picard intervenes and shoves him out of the way. Q congratulates Picard on avoiding getting stabbed, and he sends Picard back to the future, where he is now wearing a blue uniform and is a lieutenant junior grade assistant astrophysics officer. Kudos to you for remembering that. I said, he's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> After playing off his initial confusion, he goes to sickbay to talk to Beverly, but finds Q, who tells him that this is his life now due to his past choices of playing it safe. And he tells Picard he has a real heart again, and now has a safe life, which upsets Picard. Although being on the Enterprise, regardless of your rank, is not something I would ever refer to as safe. He goes to 10 Forward to talk to Riker and Troy about his future on the Enterprise. He says he feels he's suited for command, but they tell him it's unrealistic. You've had lofty goals, but you've never been willing to do what's necessary to attain them. Riker and Troy get called away to the captain's ready room, which means the Enterprise must be malfunctioning yet again. And about to explode. Picard admits to Q that it was all a mistake. But Q says he became the less arrogant man that he wanted to be, which meant he was never noticed by anyone. But Picard says he would rather die the man he was than live the life he just saw. So Q puts him back in the casino at the moment right before the Noskin confrontation. They get into an epic fist fight, where Marta turns out to be a decent fighter but still gets taken down. And Ron Howard turns out to be a huge pansy. Picard chooses to fight this time, and in the brawl, ends up getting stabbed through the heart. He starts laughing, and finds himself in sickbay, where he laughs some more. Beverly says he'll be fine, but we never actually find out what she did to save him, probably because the writers couldn't think of anything. I'm betting it was not those cortical stimulators. <laughs> Later, he talks to Riker about the episode, and says he's not sure it all really happened. But if it was actually Q, he owes him a debt of gratitude, and he starts reminiscing about other youthful encounters. Tapestry, overall? We get yet another hugely psychologically affecting event for Picard that I doubt will come up again. I'll be surprised if they even mention this the next time he encounters Q. This episode had a very abrupt start, with a setup involving some kind of conflict that we never go back to, which I was kind of hoping to learn more about. And then Picard seems to adjust to the whole dying slash Q situation way too quickly. I also felt like the writers expected the audience to accept things too quickly. It didn't help for me that the rest of the episode felt kind of dragged out. I don't like Q having this much power, if it really was him, because it ends up just being a waiting game until he leaves for whatever reason. I didn't think this episode was bad, and it was cool to see Picard get stabbed. <laughs> but I also didn't think it was great. And I didn't feel like the events in Picard's past had as much impact as they were supposed to because they involved characters that we've never seen before. I gave it a C plus, but if I were grading it purely on how much I enjoyed watching it, I would go lower. It doesn't help that we've seen Picard go through one of these life-changing events just recently in Chain of Command Part 2, and I've also been watching Deep Space Nine, and it made me think of what Sisko went through in the wormhole in the pilot. I do think it would have worked better if they had used the idea to flesh out a different character instead of doing something inner lighty to Picard again. Also, I wish they had a scene in the alternate present where Barkley gives Picard orders or bosses him around or something. That would have been funny. C plus is pretty low. I like this one. I give this one an A minus. I think they've made Picard into such a strong character that the writers almost feel like they have to do these types of episodes with him. 
and the fact that Patrick Stewart has successfully pulled it off more than once. But I agree, it would be cool if they could do that with other characters too, because they're there. I thought taking the before referenced but often vague event of Picard losing his heart and turning it into this whole story was interesting. And I think his quick adjustment made some sense since he's gone through so much shit in the past. He probably just says, I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I also wish we had more background on what the initial conflict was. I thought it was really cool how the entire away team beamed in in their action poses. <laughs> and I also wish we had gotten more of Picard's playing it safe present instead of just those couple of scenes. At least this season has picked up a lot from how it started. I agree. Hopefully we continue in that direction.